Welcome everybody. We're going to talk today about fraction card games. I am Kathleen Lawler and I am going to be your host here today. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All the games that I'm going to be talking about here today are coming from the Math Card Games book written by Dr. Joan Cotter. The, the, we're going to play actually three, three or four fraction games. The first one is the game of one. This is game F6 in the Math Card Games book. And our objective of this particular game is to become familiar with simple fractions and to add them for a total of one. Now, some of you may be looking at this going, I have no idea how to teach this to my kids. What we actually are going to do is going to start out with a fraction chart. And this is in the Math Card Games book. And this fraction chart, as you can see, we have one broken into two equal parts, broken into three equal parts, four equal parts, all the way down to ten. Looking at this chart, you can start to ask questions. How many fourths are in a whole? And if you have a tough time with it, you can start to count it. One, two, three, four. Oh, well, that was pretty easy. How many sixths are in a whole? Well, that'd be six. So you can start to see how this chart makes it very easy. There's nothing to memorize. You just see it, and you work with the answers. So again, this goal, the goal of this first game is to become familiar with simple fractions and to add them to a total of one. Two to four people can play. And we're going to use all the fraction cards except the ones. Each player gets four cards, and after each turn you take another card, so you're always keeping four in your hand. Our goal is to collect the most cards by playing the final card in a row that makes the row total one. So here's my cards, and here's your cards. We're going to use our fraction chart when it's necessary. I'm going to start. So I'm just going to throw out the one-third. Now I'm going to take another card. Your turn now. Well, it would make sense to put another one-third there and take another card. Okay, my turn. Well, I'm looking at the chart. I have two-thirds. What do I need to make one? I need another third. But I don't have one. So I need to start a new row. Okay, take another card. And your turn. Well, we're doing fifths here now. You don't have any thirds. We know we already need a one-third to finish that top row, and you don't have one. So let's look at the one, the two-fifths. Do you have something? Oh, you've got the one-fifth. So you can put that down. Take another card. Okay, my turn. By the way, did you notice the card you got? Anyhow, my turn. I'm going to lay another one-fifth there. And now it's your turn. Well, let's just... You can lay that extra one-third there. And if you need to, you can double check. One, two, three-thirds make one. Yay! You get to take the whole row. Way to go. All right, my turn. Do I have another one-fifth? I don't, so I'm going to start a new row with seven-eighths. And your turn? Do you see something that you have that might make sense here? Look at that. Look at your eighths. If I've got seven eighths, you have one more eighth. That makes eight eighths. Again, I can look at it down here if I need to. Seven eighths, one more eighth. And you get to take another row. All right, and my turn. I'm going to lay down another one half, or lay down a half. In your turn, oh look, have you been paying attention? You've got another one-fifth. You could put that there. Oh, that's funny. I actually didn't play the one-fifth there. Huh. I didn't even catch that because you could have played the one-fifth and you would have taken that whole roll, but apparently instead you decided to put the one-fourth. So you put down the one-fourth. Now it's my turn. And now it's my turn. So on that top row, I've got a one-half and a fourth. What do I need to make one? I need another fourth, and I've got one. So I'm going to lay that down, and I get to take some. And you lay down your one-fifth now. Way to go. And the game continues from there. That's the game of one. All right, the next game we're going to play is one-half. 
Now, this game is game F8 in the Math Card Games book. One quick note with the Math Card Games book. As you start in a chapter, in this case a fraction chapter, and you work your way through it, F1 is going to be the easiest game, and as we get going, they're going to get harder and harder and harder as we go along. So this game is a little bit harder than the one we did previously. So this is game one half, number F8. Our objective is to provide practice in adding and subtracting a more sophisticated fractions. Two to four people again are going to play, and we're going to use all the fraction chart cards here. Each player gets four cards, and after a turn, the players pick up another card, just like we did before. And our goal is to collect the most cards in a row that make the row total one half. But we've got something interesting with this one. We can lay cards sideways to subtract. So if I lay down one third, and you can see I've got one third shown on the chart there, I lay down one third, and another one third, I'm over a half, so I can subtract the one sixth. Here, let's do another one. Let's do three fourths. I can subtract three eighths, so this puts me back here now. Subtract three eighths, go a forward a fourth, showing that with the green, going ahead with the fourth, and then I need to come back one eighth. Now we're not telling the kids, okay, here's here's the procedures, here's the algorithm, the how we're gonna do this. What we're doing is we're just kind of working through this kind of informally with the fraction chart. Now, a way we can look at it a little bit more um, procedurally is we can look at this 3 fourths and 1 fourth, which makes 1, and I'm subtracting 3 eighths and 1 eighth, which is a half. 1 minus a half is a half. But again, we're not doing it that way. We want the children to approach it more informally, kind of more organically, using the fraction chart. That's the game of one half. The next game we're going to play is called one or two. This is game F18, so it's a little bit more complex. And our objective is to provide practice in working with fractions greater than one, two to four people again. And we're going to use all the fraction charts except those listed here, except one of each of these listed here. And we're going to arrange three rows of three cards each face up. So we're creating a grid and our goal is to collect the most cards by picking up a combination that totals either one or two. And again, trying to gather as many cards as possible. So here I've laid out my three by three cards and of course I'm going to use my fraction chart but since we're playing the game of one or two I need two charts. And with the math card games kit that we have we will give you two charts, or if you're using the Right Start Math program, you have a chart that's intact and a second one that's in pieces that you can put together to create this look. All right, so what do we have here? We have one fourth, and I can have another one fourth, and one half. So these three cards would total one. Okay, that would work. Or I can be a little bit more sophisticated and look at this. What if I do 7 tenths and 9 tenths and then I need what to make 2? I need 4 tenths, also known as 2 fifths, which I have. So either one of these two options is going to give me 3 cards, but I think I'm going to do the second one because that's just a little bit cooler. This is the game of one or two. Back up a second. So if I were to pull these, then I would take these cards off and put in new cards and then to continue to play. That was the game of one or two. The last game we're going to play is Fraction Addition War. This is game F32, so this is a pretty complex game. And what we're doing here is we're providing practice and estimating the values of fractions and adding them. Two people are going to play because it's a war game like a traditional war game 
and we're going to use the 72 fraction card to rem remove three random cards from the full deck. And we're going to divide the cards evenly between the two players. And our goal, like a war game, is to collect the most cards. A little bit of background information with this. One method of comparison between the two cards is to note the values relative to one half. So which is the greater sum? The two cards on the left or the two cards on the right? Well, both fractions in the, in the left group are greater than one half. Seven tenths is more than one half and three fifths is more than one half. And the fractions in the second group are one half or less. Therefore, the group on the left is going to be a greater total. So I don't actually have to go through and figure out what the total is. I'm just comparing which has the greater amount. I don't have to know what the amount is. I just need to know which is greater. So comparison is going to tell me my answer. This is actually a skill that is very important in math to be able to estimate. Let's do another one here. Another comparison, a method for comparison without adding is to compare a fraction from each group. So which is more? Now here I can compare the one-sixth and the one-third. One-sixth is less than one-third. Let's look at the one-eighth and the one-fourth. One-eighth is less than one-fourth. So it's pretty easy to see that the group on the left is going to be less. The group on the right is greater. Rarely will it be necessary to convert the sums to the lowest common denominator for comparison. So again, we've got my cards and your cards. We're going to use our fraction chart when necessary. I, threw, I put down 7 tenths and 1 third. You put down 2 thirds and 1 eighths. Whose is more? Well, this one's closer to 1 than this one. This one is bigger than this one. Therefore, mine's bigger. So I'm going to take them. Next two cards. Now who takes this? Again, using 1 half kind of as our, our line to check. I'm at 1 half and I'm at less than 1 half. Boy, you're almost 1 and you're close to 1 half. So whose is bigger? The total. Yours is bigger. And the game continues. And again, we're not worrying about what the total is. We're looking at the comparison of the two. Again, all these games are coming from the Math Card Games book written by Dr. Cotter. Table of Contents. The Math Card Games book includes addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fractions, clocks, and money. All of that is included in this book. There's over 300 games. It does come in a kit that includes the fraction charts, the cards. It's got a DVD that will show you how to play 14 of the games, and it also includes an abacus. Now, we didn't use the abacus here. We're going to rely more on the charts, but for the addition, subtraction, the, the number sense, um, some of the multiplication, they will use the abacus, and the, in the book will show you how to use that abacus. This has also been given the Excellence in Education Award first place in 2014. We also have a kit called Right Start Fractions. Um, help you teach through games from the very beginning of what is a fraction all the way to dividing fractions. The Right Start Math program includes fractions from level A all the way to level G. And the Right Start Math program has been given the first place award from Mary Pride's Practical Homeschooling Reader Award in 2014 and 15. In conclusion, games provide instant feedback. If you have a wrong answer, you've got an immediate response or immediate catch. To make sure you get it right. Games provide the repetition that's needed for automatic responses. And more importantly, games provide an application for the new information that the children are learning. If you have any questions that come up at a later time, you're certainly welcome to call us at 888 272 3291 or you can email us at info 
at rightstartmath.com.